G'day everyone and welcome to Blue Abroad. I'm Dan and this is Analytics Corner, The Rivals. And today we're focusing on St Kilda Football Club. So without any further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> 2019 was a season littered with bad luck and uh, it culminated in the departure of Alan Richardson, their head coach. Obviously the board were expecting finals last year and he was sacked mid-year and Ratton restored some faith really to the St Kilda community, bringing a restored sense of pride and optimism and playing a bit more of a direct brand of football. They finished the year quite well and managed to be in finals contention up till about round 18, round 20 and until um, late finishing outside the bottom four which would have to be said was probably fair for given the position they were in and the football they were playing. Plenty of reason though for joy in Morabin with Rowan Marshall really becoming one of the top ruckmen in the competition, really had a breakout year, and their backline really did shine, albeit it didn't get the wins needed. Wilkie and Clark really showed some signs of becoming real top combination in the competition. Josh Battle becoming an intercept beast down there. But the side did have horrendous luck at the start and throughout the year with injuries. Robertson and McMartin missing most of the year. Max King suffering a little bit of a setback after coming from a prolonged injury, and Jake Carlisle, we know, with a back surgery. They were often their own worst enemy, though, when they were playing games, turning the ball over at a huge alarming rate, which really did alleviate backline's renewed vigour. Re their renewed game plan, though, got St Kilda suiting this talented list. It's one that's built more for the young, and the future's bright, particularly when my beloved wife supports the Saints. Let's look at the new boys then. So, list manager James Gallagher was super active in the window and his first acquisition was Ryan Abbott, a delisted free agent. And the swingman, who can also pinch hit in the work, has really been at Geelong since 2016, so he has a long, long knowledge of the AFL game. He, what, he did look at one point destined for Gold Coast before the Saints swung in. He's a tall marking, ball playing player who has the ability to play both up top, top and pinch hit in the ruck, as we said. Very mobile and will probably look to slot in as second fiddle behind Marshall and Ryder. But he offers a neat off option for coverage and has been in the system for a while. A lot of talk at Morabin is he isn't seen as the backup. He's seen in his own entity as a swingman. And he possesses really good aerial craft. The ability to tackle as well. He's got good second and third efforts. And as a ruckman, it, he isn't bad. If you look at his VFL stats, they're not too shabby. He has had some success as well, just being the main target inside 50. So there's plenty of options there just in Ryan Abbott's uh, career that could really be interesting moving forward. Dan Butler was their first acquisition in the trade period, and he comes from Tigers. Now, for me, this was an important acquisition. A lot of clubs were after him. 21 goals this year in a winning Tigers VFL side. Uh, he's got the goals and demeanour that really do play the modern-day forward-style pressure game. He helped them win a flag, as we know, and he's a vicocious chat talent in the forward line. He's just a tackle conveyor belt. His forward pressure is up there with the best in the comp, and it really does allow the Saints to lock it inside 50 and create sustained pressure, which they probably didn't do so quite well last year. It's becoming the niche way to win football matches forward pressure, and he is probably one of the best exponents at the craft. Has good pace, has a keen eye for goal. And one of the big points of difference for him is he looks to bring in players in and around him. It's no secret that the Tigers in 17 rated this guy really highly. He was really had a lot of plod with it it's from Dimmer. So for me, he's a real important acquisition for St Kilda. And it's something that they probably don't have. Brad Hill was the big recruit, the one that took up all the headlines. And he is an all-star player in every sense of the word. Sheer pace, good ball use, excellent foot skills. The former BNF winner at Fremantle and a multiple flag winner is set to show Morabin, just set it alight. Can turn a game on his own boot. Real handful for the opposition. He's a real tough character to lock down. And for a team that's suffered turnovers, it'll be a breath of, breath of fresh air for them that they've got a solid user who looks to take the game on and hit up targets inside 50. He offers a huge point of difference moving forward. He ranks one of the highest inside efficiency ratings in the competition and he's a real cog that can really get this Ratton machine moving towards finals. He loves the run and stun type game, we know Ratton does and this guy fits that bill. Real, real solid football player 
and a real exciting recruit for them. Dougal Howard was probably a surprise because he had a very good year at Port and he was very highly rated. And he's a genuine overhead intercept base. He can play both ends of the ground, but he does play, prefer the back line. And I personally think that's where he does his best work. Dougal offers so many options for the St Kilda team. He's pretty good as a one-on-one -on -one lockdown defender. He's very good at playing loose and intercepting. And it's no wonder that Ratton calls him one of the comp's best swingmen in the competition because he has the ability to read the play exceptionally well. Decent pace, reads the ball in the air very well, got a very good kick, he distributes it well and really sets up transition. Now transition is going to be a key part of Ratton's game plan. It was when he was at Cow and it looks like it is now. And for me, having the ability for someone to go down there and really look to take the game on, attack the ball with intensity, he's got it all. Got decent speed, as we said, but he also is one of the competition's leading spoilers. Now, spoilers does create chances as well. He will really be a big, strong bow in the arsenal there at Morabin, and I'm looking forward to seeing him. I think he's due a bit of plaudits. Up next was Zach Jones. Now, Zach Jones came in from Sydney, and for me, a player that's probably undervalued, and particularly at Sydney. Um, he's, he's got now a formidable team. He just really brings in a formidable team of outside runners at St Kilda, which they haven't had for a while. And coming from a slow Sydney side that's very arduous with the ball distribution, he's going to really relish this opportunity at St Kilda. And the thought of him formidding a duo with Brad Hill is just something that kind of excites the impartial football fan. He's tough to the ball as well. He does them one percenters really well, and he's a real live back wire in midfield. He looks to cut the teams apart with direct kicking. Expect a lot of early entries from him because he's got a booming kick. He'll complement this midfield well because he also does the rough stuff very well as well. He's not just the typical outside runner. Very good acquisition and a very important cog for St Kilda. Paddy Ryder came in next um, and the formidable former All-Australian Ruckman joins. And adds a perfect foil, really, for a growing, young, up-and-coming Ruckman in Rowan Marshall. His ability to play as a key forward or play in the Ruck really offers a dynamic shift tactically for Ratton. Super strong and he's an absolute beast of a pack mark. He offers the forward line a real big centre target. And someone with the type of crummers they have on board is really going to excite them to feed off. Particularly players like Dan Butler, they're really going to enjoy playing off someone with this ilk. Also allows Marshall to roam forward, and we saw that a little bit in the Marsh series, him just roaming forward, and he's equally a little good third tall, isn't he, Ron Marshall? He really does pop up in the right places. It just allows you to aid the development of Ron Marshall and not give too much pressure on his young shoulders. He is a real magnet for the ball, his old paddy, and draws players to him. He's one of them players that just naturally draws defenders to where he is because of his oxen-like ability. I think the forward line is going to thrive, and I think also the fact that he can do a job in the midfield really allows Rowan to stay fit, stay healthy, and really heavily rotate. Huge upside when you think he didn't cost that much and they lost Josh Bruce. He's, for me, a lot much better player than Josh Bruce will be up forward for you. Now, the draft came. Now, in the rookie, rookie draft, they took Sam Jack Bell, uh, a dual-position player who can play rook and key forward. He has one of the most gigantic vertical leaps you'll ever see, and he reads the ball in flight exceptionally well. He's a Sandy graduate, so he knows the club well, and he's a local lad, supremely strong for his age as well. And we'll shadow Ryder, and he's kind of a similar type of player to Ryder. Um, he loves to bully his way around the ground. Contested marks are very high as well. He scores very well at that, and he also knows where the goals are. Some issues, though, like all big men, is his endurance and his fourth quarter intensity. But for me, a year in the VFL, watch him closely because he's got all the attributes to be a very good footballer. Leo Connolly came up next and the Gippsland speedster was probably unknown to many of us before the draft. But if you ever went to come see Gippsland power play, he showed signs. He's got raw skills that really do strike me as someone who potentially could be one of these guys when we redraft it in 10 years. Goes high up. Seeing me played more down at halfback, he was talk about him playing in the midfield a bit more. It didn't quite work, but he's got that contested ball line-breaking ability. He looks to take the game on, and that is super important. We know that all the halfbacks now, that's where the transition of attack starts, and he really has a bullet-like kick. He's a modern-day halfback flank for me, and if he reaches his potential, he's very similar to like a Hunter Clark on the other side. Two guys that really look to aggress and take the game on and implement 
their game style on the opposition. Very versatile, takes the game on, as we say, a bit loose in the tackle. And the Andy Dragons, um, Ryan Burns, the captain. And this guy has congestion ability to succeed in the AFL. He looks to find space and get away from it, from a congested situation, very well. He's got real good burst. His first couple of metres are really quick. He can go both ways, and we know both two weird midfielders in this competition are a commodity. He never stops working. He's got real high work ethic, real ball-like player. Um, bit of time and size, and I could really see him becoming an on-baller for St Kilda Football Club. Has issues kicking on the run, which a lot of players do. He, he has a habit of just booming it in there and turning it over, but that can be, that can be turned out of you. And for me, he's got some solid players around him to learn of. Probably look to add a bit of goal kicking, a bit of muscle in the put in this season. But honestly, watch him with interest. Check him out the VFL games because he could be a very good footballer for yourselves. So let's look at the 22 for round one. We've gone with Geary, Howard, Wilkie, Webster, Carlisle and Clark. Now for me, this back line has got everything. You've got... We know the quality of Howard, his ability to mark, his ability to contest. Jake Carlisle fits into that bracket as well. I think Wilkie and Geary are really, really solid little niggly players. They're really good at keeping the pressure on. They're really good at not letting Smalls get away from them. And Webster and Hunter Clark on the flanks. For me, I'm super excited about Hunter Clark. He is literally got the ability to be probably top 10 in the league for his position. He, he, he has that endeavour that with the ball. He has that intent, that purpose. So does Wilkie. For me, Carlisle and Howard have just got that ooze about combination. They could be a real solid key pairing. Both very good players. Both use the ball well. Both look to take the ball on. Very exciting for me, that back line. I can see it doing very well under a Ratten style of quicker ball movement play. Midfield, for me, this is where the magic happens. You've got Billings, Ross, Hill, Marshall, Steele and Hanabry. Now, if Hanabry can stay fit, we know there's no doubting his class and his ability. Very good player in congestion. Looks to the outside, looks to release his runners. And he's got Hill and Billings there. I expect Gresham to do some time in there as well, but we'll get on to him. Ross and Steele, for me, there's the talk that Steele is going to be freed up this year and he's not going to play a tagging role. This guy's an absolute gun. I love Jack Steele. I see a lot of St Kilda. Obviously, as I say, my wife supports them. So they're a team that I do follow quite closely. I think Jack Steele has the ability to really break out this year as well. Really stamp his authority on the competition in a more free role. Seb Ross, his delivery is brilliant. He looks to set the game up for him. And Rowan Marshall, wow. I mean, he's come of age. He's a super exciting footballer. Solid in the rook, mobile. He's the modern day ruckman. And for me, I think when we talk about Grundy and Gorn, I think in the next couple of years we'll be talking about Marshall and English as a rook fight for the best one and two. Solid, solid player, Ron Marshall. Super excited about seeing how he goes in his second second year after his breakout last. Up forward, we've got Gresham, Membry, Loney, Max King, Paddy Ryder and Dan Butler. Now, to me, this has got everything else. Jay Gresham really impresses me. He's, he's really tenacious. He looks to take the game on. He reads the ball when it hits the deck really well. Um, Tim Membry, we know this guy on his day can kick you six, seven. He can kick clusters. It's just finding that day. Loney's very good. He brings his players in and around 50. He's a really good link man between midfield and forward. Max King, super excited about this bloke. Absolutely raved about him pre-draft last year. I know he got injured and I think everyone just missed him. And I think St Kilda did very well to get him where they did. For me, I think he would have been one or two should he have been fit. This guy is next level. We talk about Lukosius as a once-in-a-generational forward. I, I don't think Lukosius, in my opinion, is fit to lace Matt King's boots, to be honest. I think Max King is your 50-plus goal kicker. I think he's a very exciting player. I think he's going to have a really good year this year. And I think just being that third with Ryder there, it takes a bit of pressure off him. And I think he could do some damage. Ryder, we know, just a beast. He's going to draw players and he's going to give Butler and Loney and Gresham time and space because he just draws players. He's like a magnet to defence. And Dan Butler, to me, there's good pressure in there now. Loney, Butler, Gresham's good pressure, good intent to lock it in. Don't get out there until you get a score. On the pine, we've gone Savage, Dunstan, Jones and Roberton. 
super excited about Robinson. I think he's in just about everyone's super coach team in my league. Real good player. I think he will be pushing to really break into that first six up top, down back. Um, Luke Dunstan, real solid user, real solid player. Zach Jones, we know we've talked about him, just offers so many options. Like if you look, if that's your starting midfield and you've got Zach Jones on the pine, you've got a hell of a lot of options all of a sudden and options win you football matches in this league. Shane Savage had a good year last year and he just offers that intercept marking ability that if things do get on top, he's there to help. And I think for me, that is a very good 22. And I'd be super excited if I was a St Kilda fan. I think you've got players there, really, who can push you up to the eight. So let's look at 2020. What does it have in store? Now, there's obviously going to be talk about finals. There always is. And whether, but whether they can do it or not, I don't know. Super impressed with their acquisitions, though. I think they've traded very well. I think Dougal... Howard is an absolute animal down the back. I think you combine him with Jake Carlisle, you've got the defence, a real keystone there. Then Hill, Gresham, Jones and Co. They've got the tools to do damage on the outside and the inside now. They definitely have one of the strongest back lines in the comp and statistically it's one that should only get better. Ryan plays the right way and he has some serious talent at his disposal. Gresham moving into the midfield really is will be one of the highlights of the year, I think. And he's a very underrated player with him being sixth most improved last year. So it's something that for me, this side that ranks 10th in marks inside 50 if we look at the stats, but they return 17th in goal scores. A lot rests on this forward line firing because they get the ball in there. The problem is, is they've been inefficient. Now, Champs Data has them 12th. TPI had them 15th. I, I think that's about fair. I see them the, uh, 14 and above for me, I think. And I, I just think it's going to take time for this side to gel and that game plan to implement but for me you've got them points of difference up forward now butler improves that points from forward turnover you know hill and jones are going to increase the entries so for me 14th i'm saying now but they fire i hate to say it the eight could be there so the ones to watch this year i thought this was easy because i'm a big fan of him and i've been wanting to talk about him it's more selfish but as we said, Max King, for me, phenomenal player. Now, we hear that Lukosius was the once in a generation f forward. To me, there are degrees apart between King and Lukosius. If you could get a university graduate degree in footy IQ, Max King would have a master's in it. His awareness, his ability to find space is second to none. He can mark in packs, he can mark on his own, he can peel off and find space. He's very, very physically gifted. Possesses a sweet set shot. And when all that comes together, it's just goals, isn't it? And for me, this kid can really be the next Nick Rewalt for St. Kilda. A player that, you know, just kicks goals. He's the centre target. He's the hero at Morabin. And I can see that. For me, he's just got 60-plus goal kicker written all over him. One thing to me that separates him from the others is his ability to handle pressure. The ability to handle expectation. He steps up in the plate. Kicking winning scores throughout his junior years in big games. This year, he's been working, it. obviously, we know, in the VFL. And I think that will do him wonders. Just being taken away from the AFL for a year in the VFL. He will learn the system. He'll learn how it works, what's expected of him. And I expect him to really challenge memory this year to the death for the top goal kicker here. I really think he can break out straight away. If he gets his opportunity, the kid is a game breaker. And for me, he looks like he's put a bit of muscle on. He looks strong. He looks slight. Very talented but kid. I expect him to hit the ground running and really cause havoc in the AFL for the years to come. Super excited about him. Honestly, check him out. He's a very good footballer. So how do you beat a rat inside? Well, I mean, they have outside run now and they have a forward line that looks like it should be more consistent. However, it's the wastefulness. For me, the way to beat St Kilda is the pressure on the ball. You, you put the pressure on the contest. You look to, for them to be forced to kick it long. Not play their game style of trying to keep ball and move it forward in, in droves. Hitting up the corridor is one thing. Under pressure, they seem to panic and kick it and turn it over. It's about manning up and staying disciplined and forcing them to kick to them. One and two contests that you apply. Locking it in the foot. The only way to beat this defence is keep, keep a deep forward pressure to really make them think about the area, look to kick to the flanks to try and relieve a bit of pressure. 
and just apply that pressure and take your opportunities. A lot of new faces in this lineup as well, and that has to be said. How will they gel? No one ever knows how it can be. That's one. But for me, if you're going to look at historically how you beat this side, it's applying pressure and looking to force the turnovers. They, they, they like to run. They like to move quickly. Slow it down. Play it on your terms. If you allow St. Kilda to play on their terms, they have the ability to hurt you. So that's, that's, that's basically it in a nutshell. Just apply pressure. Don't let them play their game plan. Very simple one. But it's probably one of the most often forgotten ones in the AFL. As always, guys, thank you for watching. I wish St. Kilda the best of luck. A big shout out to my wife and a big shout out to St. Kilda TV as well. They've done some collabs with us. Hope you have a wonderful year upset when you play us. And as always, stay navy blue, folks. See you next time.